a tribe of Judah. I don't have to have You have to pull a best time. Shaking the glory.
Holy Ghost. Oh, I'm dancing the Holy Ghost. Oh, I'm dancing the Holy Ghost. Oh, I'm moving 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 the Holy Gh
May heaven intervene. Amen. May heaven intervene. Amen. Lift your right hand, say, My father, my father. My my father, father, my father. In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. we Jesus. lift up this nation in your hands. We lift up this nation. Every error. Every error. Raising your hands against the church. Raising your hands. Oh God, arise. In Jesus' name, we pray. I want a louder amen. Yeah. I celebrate this this evening. Clap your hands to Jesus as you remain in the position to pray. We are going to pray as where he stopped, we continue. We are going to pray for the nations of Mali, Libya, United Arab Emirates, Uganda, Burkina Faso, and Gabon. If you look at these nations, they are Muslim nations. So we are going to pray according to the word of God in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. He said, as a newborn babes, desire the sins of the make of the world that they may grow thereby. We are going to pray, let there be desire of the presence of God, which is the word of God. In those nations, in UAE, amen. Make it your prayer tonight. Lift up your voice and say, my father, my father. My, my father, father, my father. As I lift up my voice tonight, as I lift up my voice tonight, I bring the nations of Mali, I bring the nation of Mali, UAE, UAE, Libya, Libya, Uganda, Uganda, Burkina Faso, Burkina Faso and Gabon, Gabon. Before the end of the law, the the let there be order of, of, of the word of God. As we pray, as we pray now, now. in the name of Jesus, lift up your voice. I desire the the Jesus name we are praying you know the Bible says in Psalm 16 verse 11 where the presence of God is there is liberty we are going to pray this nation they are suffering because of outside of the presence of God the presence of God is not in those nations but because we are praying to die tonight there is going to be a change in the realms of the spirit I said there's going to be a change in the realms of the spirit. Yeah. As you lift up your voice, say, my father, my father. My father, my father. Let there be freedom. Let there be freedom. In those nations. In those nations. We don't care we don't. what I hold them down from receiving Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior. Tonight. The hunger for the war will hit them one by one. Make it your prayer tonight. The hunger for the war. The hunger for the war. We hit this nation. We turn things around. We turn this nation around. We turn this nation around. We turn this nation in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Your prayers are answered in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can we celebrate Jesus? Please, it's offering time. Wherever you are, inside or outside, pick your offering, put your hand in your bag, your bag, your wallet, hold a tangible offering. If you are connecting life, please make use of the details that will come on the screen very soon. Get connected and see God increase you financially. Please, can we lift our offering to the Lord? And begin to speak over that offering. Pray for financial harvest in your ministry. Ask the Lord for open doors. Ask the Lord for increase. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, the God of our Father. We ask, Lord, by this opportunity and privilege to give to you, let our financial heavens be open. In the name of Jesus, I decree your offerings are blessed. In Jesus' mighty name. At the mention of your name, every knee must bow. At the mention of your name, every tongue confess. Are you ready? Are you ready to praise him? Are you ready? Can we praise him together? If you are ready, give the Lord a big shout of praise. A big, 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 big shout of praise. If you know you are the first person to get the miracle tonight, jump up, shout, turn around, and give the Lord a big shout of praise. Hallelujah. At the mention of your name, every knee must bow. At the mention of your name, Every time confess, let me hear you say. Adoration of your name. Every knee must bow. Adoration of your name. Adoration of your name. Every time confess. Oh, you are alone. You are alone. You are alone. You are alone. He is the King of Kings. You are me. I want to see you dance. Come on, give him praise. Jesus is the king of kings. He's a mighty God. 
around, oh. Hey, yeah. You turn my life around, oh. You turn to another one, oh. oh. How, How many I go talk? How many I go talk? They go breaking, I go finish. Hey. If I start to count my blessings, okay, more rukaj. Hey, should they always blow my mind? They go. Oh God, God. Hey. You never disappoint me You may blow my mind oh. Supernatural God Oh God, God. Oh God, God. You never disappoint me You may blow my mind oh. Supernatural God Oh God, God. Oh God. Hey, sir. Hey. I've got joy, 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 oh joy, 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 oh joy, in your life, in my life. For a miracle, let me hear you. I've got no one. Don't be like me. I've been too many days. Set you for a man. I've got no one. Don't be like me. Don't be like me. Am I Jesus? Every day, every day, every day. Hey! 
preso, agora ele é preso. Agora ele é 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 preso, agora ele é preso. Stop your hand and shout hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord for what he is doing. Another privilege and opportunity of coming to this ministers without blemish. And our goal is that when we gather at that river in that international intercontinental interdispensational rally may nobody here be found absent in the name of Jesus for that is our goal we just bless God for God's servant a gift to our generation His passion for soul is a very good example. And apart from passion for souls, let me observe his outreach into what we call socio-humanitarian mandates is remarkable. Feeding the poor and feeding people it's a part of the social humanitarian mandate. The church has two mandates. Number one, the great Christian mandate, which is evangelism. And then number two, social humanitarian mandate, helping the less privileged. Thank you, sir, for what the Lord is doing with you and what the Lord is about doing with you. And let me join people globally to say happy birthday great servant of God ancient of days sanctify your word your word is true in the name of Jesus amen it is good in a conference like this even if you are privileged to speak you need to hear others so that you will know the angle they are coming from. I was super blessed by the reverend who spoke all the way from Lagos, who spoke all the way from Lagos and Ouch, <laughs> who spoke in the morning. And I'm also privileged to hear from God's general who spoke in the morning. Turn with me to 2 Kings chapter 5. I want to read 1. I want to read 14. 2 Kings chapter 5. I want to read verse 1. And I want to read verse 14. Now Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was great, a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master. Because by him, the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor. But a leper.
14. So he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan. According to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh was restored. Like the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. Many people are dying on the inside. But their problem is, whom do I go to? Many, many great people, many preachers, thank God I'm addressing ministers tonight. Many are dying on the inside. But their problem is what? Whom do I go to? Do I go to a man who is already setting traps for me and looking for what to say about me? Is he the man I will go and open up myself to? Who do I go to? And many die because they have nobody to look for. I want to catch what God General said in the morning. He said, Be real, don't pretend. Now, tap your neighbor and ask him, what is your unconquered area? Just, just, just ask him. Say it again. Say it again. Ask, I mean, ask the person. Look at the person. Ask him, what is your unconquered area? Just a very important question. What's your unconquered area? Are we ready? A big commander, a big officer, honorable in the sight of men, a very popular man, very great. He can go in as his excellency or her excellency. A force to reckon with, somebody to write home about. A mighty man of the Lord. But the man that conquered cities, there was something that conquered him. The man, the heavyweight man, charismatic as you are, great pastor, great evangelist, pastor's wife. I don't want to know your ecclesiastical title. But this evening is an evening of oppression. Say the truth. Forget about the title you came with. Forget about what they call you. People eulogize you. Sometimes they don't even know that you can go to the toilet. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. They don't even know. They think you are a superhuman. But on this altar tonight, because this is a place where you need to open up. You need to open up. This message is a message of personality assessment. How we are you naturally wired? How we are you naturally wired? That conflicts with true spirituality. Don't look at your neighbor. Look at me. Look at me. This message is for you. It's a personal message. How we are you naturally wired. That conflicts with true spirituality. Do you have unresolved issues? Do you have unhealed hearts? Do you have involuntarily repeated behaviors? Involuntarily repeat clothes covered many things. What is your clothes covering? What's your title covering? We have come not to massage your ego. We have come that you might come to the altar in keeping with the spirit of this conference. What a man of God say. No need if you pretend here, if you pretend on this altar, if you claim to be what you are not, it means you are indirectly announcing your obituary. 
let me reflect within this few minutes. You have a big name. Congratulations. A big church. Congratulations. People respect you. Congratulations. But this evening, I just have one question. What is your unconquered area? What is that thing that you are yet to conquer? Can you be sincere? What are the things you are unfortunately struggling with? Who is the real man behind the big name? Who is the real man behind a great woman? Who is the real man behind the bishop? Who is the real man behind the evangelist, behind the reverend, behind the senior pastor, behind the general overseer? Who is the real man? What does your clothes cover? Are there possible unconquered areas of your life that you need to deal with in this conference? Oh my God. Do you have a plethora of defensive mechanisms? Some conditional reflexes? Are you suffering from the demonized anger tantrum? Is that your disease? Any little thing you boil like the hot water. You can even scatter the communion table. When you are angry. What's your unconquered area? Everybody likes you until you get angry. What did I say? What did I say? What did I say? Everybody likes you until you do what? You get angry. That is the leprosy of Naaman. I don't want to dwell again. Much has been said about pride here. There's something the Spirit of God has been saying through both the first speaker and the second speaker. Pride, 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 pride. It can steal away the potential thing that God wants to do with you. Yes. To be proud is to sack divinity. Yeah. You are sacking divinity. You are saying no. It's about me. Is that your unconquered area? Many things have been said that I don't want to repeat. To you, you are the best. To you, Wow! You eat the glory. And because you eat the glory, in the words of the great apostle, the Lord says, since you are taking the glory, complete the work. Finish the work. Is that your unconquered area? And how do we know a proud man? His vocabulary. The content of his language. Do you know you can exhibit pride by what you say while you are preaching? The proud man is an egotist. He's eye specialist. I, 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 I. And how much glory does the Lord take even in your summer? I like this signature to song that says, All the glory must be to the Lord for he is worthy of no man or earth should give glory to himself. All the glory must be to the Lord. No man, no man, no man, no man or earth should give glory to himself. All the glory must be.
your un unconquered area could be money matters. Money matters. Why do you, why is it that money is your unconquered area yet you want to be a treasurer? You want to kill yourself? You want, you know, let me ask you, let me go practical. You know, it was advised that we go practical. How many of you would not like to be a treasurer? Raise your hand. Huh? You see, we are being sincere this evening. You wouldn't want to be a treasurer. Raise your hand. Why? Don't tell me the reason. <laughs> your unconquered area may be domineering attitude. Your conquered area may be lying tongue. Lying tongue. God's servant said there are people that John did not do what? What did he say in the morning? What did the Bible actually say which he echoed? That John did not do what? Yet. Do you know, instead of manufacturing testimonies that never happened, that's not what you have been taught here. Desire to sound great, to look great in the eyes of the people, making you to tell stories that didn't happen. Somebody comes in. I traveled to Sokoto, killed every cockroach. Went to Calabar, every rat was destroyed. I went to Portacot and dealt with the lizard. And I went to Elorin, finished all the scorpions. I have come to Auchi to deal with the mosquitoes. And my worry is this. While he is in Auchi, you won't see any mosquito. It is only when he leaves Auchi that other people begin to hear of the mosquito that we are destroyed in Auchi. Like that. Why are you like that? I say, why are you like that? Is that what you are taught? Is that what you learned from this place? Hear me? I have said it. Let me repeat. It's not enough to criticize fake powers produced original. And one of the challenges for you to be here, sit down and learn from people who, have, who are in the field. God's field marshal in the field. I want to tell you, fake will not last. I repeat what I said. There are two things. Church can grow. Church can swell. Church can grow. Church can do what? You can swell a church through lies. You can swell a church through occultic means. You can swell a church by going diabolical, getting into dangerous combination. But Swelling does not take time. And when you swell, it's a sign of disease. And when you swell, you will soon burst. And when you burst, the world will know that you are fake. Growth is natural, steady, and reliable. Growth natural, steady, and reliable. I see great things after this convention. Your church will grow by geometric progression. But stay clear of lies. Don't impose testimony. Anything that didn't happen did not happen. Don't defend the God. What did I say? What did I say? What did I say? It's not in your hands. How can you defend the God with lies? Say the truth. So if lying tongues 
is your arches healed? If it is your your what? Unconquered area. The altar is free this evening. <laughs> What's your actual healed? Is it about opposite sex matters? Have you become a clergy but a public toilet? Are you one of those who want everything in this case? Come on. Is that, is that your weakness? Is that your unconquered area? I am saying this evening, Naaman was great. Naaman was powerful. Yet, he was a leper. I don't have to take so far. But let me say this to you before we pray. What is it that your wife has been complaining about? Ask your neighbor. I mean, tap your neighbor, ask him, what is that thing that your wife has been complaining about? I want you to touch your neighbor, ask him. If there's a man by your side, touch him and say, what is it that your wife has been complaining about? Number two. Turn to the light. If there's a woman, and ask the woman, what is it that your husband has been complaining about? Just help me ask that question. That thing that your wife has been complaining about and you are still repeating them is your unconquered area. That thing that your husband has been complaining about and you are still repeating them is your unconquered area. Now, can I tell you something? What great men say, number one, there is a fool in each of us. There is a fool in each of us. Number two, there is not one of us who doesn't rest with shameful secret and deliberating fears. John Calvin said, without knowledge of self, there's no knowledge of God. Understand yourself. But, Look at that verse. At the end of the day, man who did not die with leprosy. Naaman was cleansed by God's grace under the corporate anointing of this commission. You won't go home the same way that you came. <laughs> leprosy of Naaman was healed. You are not meant to end up that way. I speak over your head. That leprosy will not kill you. It will not kill you. It will not kill you. Even if it killed people who came, who went before you, the greatest mistake the devil made is to allow you to come to this conference. That's a mistake the devil made. To, to have allowed you to come to this place is a big mistake and he will forever regret it. The devil will forever regret it because this is a day of your freedom. It's a day of your cleansing. Yes, it is, it is, it is. Can I let you know something? There is solution to your seeming unconquered complex. There is solution. Naaman listened even to a maid who has something relevant to say. God will bring the word of God being preached here. Directive that have been issued from this holy altar shall help you, prefer solution to you. Listen. Sensitivity to what the spirit is saying. Listening to the word of God. He listened to the maid. He listened to the prophet. And then he had solution. Can you acknowledge tonight? Lord, can I be sincere to you? Tell him what you have not told any man. Lord, don't let this unconquered area put me into trouble. 
Papa, don't let it sack me from the ministry. I want to be sincere. I want to be truthful. God! It has led me to fight secretly. It has led me into certain things. But according to your word, Nema was healed. Nema was healed. Can I announce to you, Naaman did not die with that leprosy. Naaman did not die with that leprosy. But he did something. He obeyed. He obeyed. And he went and dipped himself seven times. And he was cleansed. Apostle Paul said, I buffet my body. I chain my body. Body, I understand you more than any other person. I know, if I allow you, I know the extent you want to go. I use a chain so that I shall let me conquer you, body, so that you will not send me to hell. Ladies and gentlemen, fathers and mothers, it is the good will of God to give you the kingdom. It is the good will of God. I was, I, I like what the apostle said. And he said, don't sacrifice your Christianity for ministry. I like that word. I like that word, man of God. Christianity comes. Now, let me tell you. Christianity will lead you to heaven. But ministry will not lead you to heaven. Did anybody hear me? That's why. This is a generation of intelligent sinners. A generation of charismatic sinners. What did I call it? Charismatic sinners. On this platform, let's look beyond the charisma and also look at character. Are you for heaven? Can you make heaven? Conquer it tonight before it takes you to unexpected hell. Bow your heads in prayer. Can somebody stand up Place your hand on your heart. Okay, no, let me put it this way. Sit down. Papa is watching us. Is there any unconquered area of your life you want to report and present to God? Stand to your feet. Oh my God. You know, I, I wouldn't ask you to come to the altar because number one, there's no time. Number two, almost everybody is standing up. Tell the Lord. My congregation, they don't even know the man behind the big name. They don't know the woman behind the big clothes. Papa! I lie sometimes. I cook up stories. Can you bow your heads? Say a few things to the Lord. Say, here am I. Leprosy did not kill Nema. Oh my God. Nema did not die with a leprous. He didn't die. Let this one not leave me, oh God. I surrender. I confess. Lord, here am I. Perform a surgery in my heart. I dip myself seven times. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. 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 Here am I. Lord, I confess to you, God. I 
they call they eulogize me they call me several names but there is an unconquered area in my life causing heavy spiritual problems i confess them to you ancient of days here am i for cleansing here am i Laya Masuda, it has scattered my home, it has scattered my integrity. Leremo Zubra Keshanda Laburia, set me free, Lord. Go ahead and just talk to the Lord asking for a visitation and an encounter a turn around in your life may he help you that's why we have the holy spirit that's why we have the holy spirit that's why we have the holy spirit ask the lord mm -hmm. go ahead and ask the lord Hey, yeah, hey, 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 I have come before your throne I've seen your face My life has changed I have come before your throne I've seen your face My life has changed I have come before your throne I've seen your face my life has changed i have come before your throne i've seen your face my life has changed i have come before your throne i've seen your face my life has changed i have come before your throne i've seen your face my life has changed i have come before your truth i've seen your face my life has changed i am here i am here i am here I have come before your truth. I've seen your face. My life has changed. I have come before your truth. I've seen your face. My life has changed. You know, you know, you know, when your fear, listen, when your fear is about losing your ministry and losing your membership and losing your church land and losing your place of worship, sometimes a pastor is given a quick notice by a landlord and the pastor is worried. This is a pastor who is not worried that God has left him. This is a pastor who is not worried that the Lord has left him. When your biggest fear is losing God's presence, your biggest fear, see, when you understand the essence of your calling, there are things that you don't prioritize. Because when God is happy with you, things will fall in place. We are going to pray and ask the Lord for help. 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 Go ahead and ask him. 
help me may i not lose your presence help me may i not lose that presence of god help me in jesus name as he was speaking there's something i remembered i said some years ago the biggest problem Neman had was pride pride when he was giving an instruction on what to do he said uh -uh. i expected him to come out and wave his hand or rather he said deep sir in deeping you go down the problem with Neman is Neman refused to go down so god said deep he said there are better rivers there are banner there are papa in those rivers you bat but in this river you dip you are looking for where to bat go there but we have to dip as prescription there's a prescribed place to dip in proverbs 13 verse 23 i was seeing something there is much food in the tillage of the poor but there is that is destroyed for want of judgment there is enough food where god has sent you but there is something making you experience scarcity there's enough supply but injustice is why you experience scarcity we're going to take a second prayer lord where you have sent me may it produce for me this land you've sent me i speak to my head oh head yeah the word of the lord oh it oh it yeah the word of the lord produce for me produce for me go ahead and talk to the lord about it now Take your seat. Let's celebrate God's servant, Dr. Chidi Okorafo, for this powerful word we just heard. Amen. Amen. Exodus chapter 17. Let's celebrate Mama for that praise session. Let's celebrate Dr. Lizzie for that praise session. Give the Lord a hand for her. No matter how God has helped you as a pastor's wife, don't lose how you started with him. If you're in the drama department, even as a geo's wife, keep acting the drama. If you're in the prayer band, never outgrow what lifted you. Amen. Exodus chapter 17 and verse 12. We'll take one verse of scripture, but as we, a minister will navigate other verses in the same scripture and other scriptural reference. But Moses' hands we are heavy. And they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon. And Aaron and Hor stayed up his hands. The one on the side. The other. On the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Okay, let's do verse 13. And Joshua discomfited Amalek. Oh, with the edge of the sword anointed man but tired hands anointed man but tired hands sir are you aware the same rod that moses lifted up against amalek was the rod that parted the red sea are you aware the same rod that moses lifted up the same hand that lifted that rod was the same hand that raised up the rod to heaven dropped it on the ground 
and the rod became a serpent. That same rod. The ten plagues of Egypt was performed by that same man. So you cannot dispute that the hand was anointed. But sir, the hand was anointed. But it got to the point the hand was tired. One of the biggest problems pastors, like I said, is that we do not show our vulnerability. We act like we do not make mistakes. We act like we, like Dr. said, we don't even use the room. Anointed hands. Paul and Barnabas quarreled. I said they quarreled. The Bible didn't just say the question. They had a sharp disagreement. Acts 15 from verse 39. Sharp over the issue of John Mark. One wanted John Mark. The other wanted Silas. There was the, and the contention was so sharp between them. So they departed asunder. It's normal to quarrel. But it's wrong to stay quarreling. There can be this. If you bring up that translations, you'll be amazed the way they put it, message and all of that. You'll be amazed the way they put that scripture. Tempers fled. Tempers fled. Sharp disagreement that they separated from one another. Tempers fled. People were angry. They were offended. He said, This man was anointed by God. But his hands were tired. Ah, a time comes in ministry where your hands are tired. Before then, God spoke to, to, to Moses. And Moses instructed Joshua from verse 9. He said, choose men that can fight. Choose men. Let them go out. Everyone is a fighter. But not everyone is exposed to this dimension of fighting. The problem we have, can I say this to you? Can I say this to you? There are people that are gifted and wild. In the times of conflict, you don't need the gifted and wild. You need the discreet and wise. Listen, it is good to have an assistant pastor. But it's better to be the assisted pastor. It is good to have an assistant pastor. But it is better for you, you, to be the assisted pastor. I wish I'm talking to somebody here. It is good. But let me say this as I establish this truth. Three men climbed the mountain. Only one man was holding the rod. Others followed him. Climbed with him. But they knew he's one man. That's giving the mandate to hold the rod. When you follow well, where grace climbs, you climb. Don't desire his rod. Desire is God. Where grace climbs, you climb. You see, the arrogance of the Pentecostal church, of Pentecostal circle, <laughs> is that they don't know that God judges everyone who breaks the edge. Whether you are orthodox, whether you are out of the church, you are in the church, he that breaks the edge, the serpent by. Sir, do you know there is no VIP HIV? There's no presidential cancer. There's no VIP HIV. The same attack, the same cancer, the same tumor that attacks the poor, attacks the rich. The same infirmity that comes on one, comes on another. There were three men that climbed the mountain. Only one had the rock. You see, when you are aware, please don't forget this, when you are aware that you are not sent to everyone, you will then realize nobody can take your members. Whoever left you left. They didn't take him. 
<laughs> my sheep hear my voice. And they follow me. Anyone not following is not your sheep. Nobody can take your members because you are not sent to everybody. I wish I said something. Those you are sent to, they go nowhere. Those you are... There are members for a season. There are members for a reason. There are members for a reason. There are some for a season. But there are some for a lesson. There are members that God positioned in your life. You see those things, you don't let them in Bible school. One day something happened to me to remember. I said, what are we supposed to call this course in Bible school? This is not pneumatology. This is not theology. This is not spiritology. This is not end time study. This is not eschatology. What is this kind of study? Experientiology. Am I communicating now? Am I talking to somebody here? This man, do you know? There is a way your heart is positioned. Around them. Aaron and Hor. Who was Hor? We know who Aaron was. Aaron was the elder brother. Who was Hor? Hor. You want to hear this? Oh, you didn't know this. Caleb. You know Caleb? That great guy we call Caleb. Who said, give me this mountain. Later married Miriam. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, you didn't know. Hall was a son of Caleb. Hall was the grandfather of Bazalel. You see that? Who went up with him? Aaron. Hall, nephew. Aaron, brother. We don't do family ministry. But we get to a point where ministry is family. We do not do family ministry. But ministry grows to a point it becomes family. When members see their pastor like their biological father. This man has affected me much for me to just call a spiritual father. This one is a father that I will stay with as he grows, I grow. Am I talking to somebody right now? There is a way. Do you know what Elisha said? He looked at Naaman. A Gehazi rather. He said this leprosy. It will follow him and his seed forever. Do you know where Elisha was? Double portion. Of the spirit. Of Elijah. So his words were heavy. Oh you didn't say that? Second Kings 5 27. He said the leprosy that was on Naaman shall cleave unto thee and thy seed. For what? For what? For what? For what? For what? And he went out of his presence what? But do you know as he left his presence as the word fell, Gaiasi became a leper. He left his presence with leprosy. As he walked out, leprosy left him. He wasn't leprous forever. Leprosy left him. Ah. Why will he say that? 2 Kings 8 verse 4. The king talked with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God. With leprosy, you cannot appear before the king. Elijah was Elijah was safe. This was a sickness that was to have been on his seed forever. But yet, this man assessed kings. Assessed kings. Why? God's servant had spoken that this will follow ever. Yet, the man knew a key to reverse the course. What did he, what did he do? Second Kings 8 from verse 4. Bring it up. And the king taught with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, tell me, I pray thee, all the great things that Elisha has done. So a man that gave you leprosy, you are not supposed to have a good report about him. But hear what Elisha said. Let me show you where the leprosy left. And the, verse 5, come on. It came to pass as he was telling the king 
how he restored a dead body to life. A man gave him leprosy. A man cursed him. But Elijah said, I love this man too much to speak ill of him. God saw the position of his hand. God said, leprosy, go back to where you came from. I love this man. He may, be, he may have been angry. He may have executed pain and judgment. But he had, he had a grace on his life that I cannot deny. People will leave a church. They know the man is called. They have been healed under his commission. They have seen miracles happen. But the anger in their heart controls their mouth. This is a... I, I, I wish I was talking to somebody here. Bring up the scripture. Restore the dead body. Cry to the king for a house and for a land. As Angehazi said, my lord, this is the woman and this is her son. This man <laughs> was a man that was cursed was a man that made a mistake and the king opened his mouth the, the servant opened his mouth and said leprosy forever but leprosy left him because with leprosy you cannot stay among the camp of people with leprosy you cannot assess the community of men this man did not just assess men he assessed royalty why because the state of his heart the position of his heart sir there are unctions you get even without being prayed for even with our hands laid on you. The Bible says, and the mantle fell. It didn't say Elijah dropped it. It fell. There is the state of your heart under an anointing. The reason why we have so much disaster in the body of Christ is that we have ingrates everywhere. Ingrates. So the blessing is not left behind. Am I communicating? Am I communicating here? So many people are struggling. It's as though ministry has become very hard. People are hustling. People are selling things. No, sir, that's not God. No, that's not God. No, hustling without grace is hostility. That's not God. Oh, you say, what's he talking about? That's not God. You don't save for ministry. You don't gather money for ministry. Oh, you don't understand? Matthew chapter 10 verse 9. Matthew 10 verse 9. Matthew 10 verse 9. When he sent them, he said, Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses. As I'm sending you, don't, pro don't gather anything. Because the supply is in your going. It's not in your saving. The great things that you will enjoy in ministry are not saved for. The land, the building are not things you save for. Every honest man will tell you that they didn't save. It just came. You think that it will come by saving. That is why the Lord is allowing you to save and nothing is coming. It is a provide no purse, no brass, no take gold for yourself. Because in your going is your growing. In your going is your supply. In your going is your lifting. In your going is your advancement. When you have people around you who are more interested in your work than you, that's a check. And they are more interested in your work. You don't understand what I'm saying. There are people that are more interested. Have you seen a house? A landlord gave his house and he put a caretaker. And the caretaker loves the house than the landlord. A nice landlord will change him. Many of us don't know that ministry we are caretaking. We now love the work than the owner. Uh, we love the work than the owner of the work. And that is why things are, we are struggling. I, I, have, I am too at rest. We were thrown out of a place of worship. And we are worshiping under the tree. I was preaching under the tree. I did service under the tree. And the people say, what do we do? How do we talk to the men who owns the hall? I say, I'm not talking to anybody. I have the money to pay. I pay them. They say, somebody else has paid. So let's be under the tree. At least they allowed us to stay here. 
under the tree. One of the times it rained. And you know when the real rain has stopped falling, the tree rain is still falling. <laughs> when the real rain has stopped, the tree rain. Rain had stopped. The tree was still raining. We are there. Ah, you see, when God knows you are at rest, he will fight. It's not a concern. Be still, comma. And know. Be still. And know. That I. I make a declaration upon you. By the power of the Holy Spirit. This is in of your life. This is in of your destiny. You will not take a step ahead of God. You will not take a step ahead of God. You will not take a step ahead of God. Take your seat. I'm still talking of Aaron and all. They climbed the mountain with Moses. Can I say this to you? And I want everybody hearing the sound of my voice to listen to this. It will help you. It will help you. Aaron and Hall climbed the mountain with Moses. Moses had the rod. Hear this, it will help you. Not every one of us we appear before Pharaoh. Only few we appear. When they appear, their duty is to mention us to Pharaoh. Not every one of us. Joseph said, I will interpret the dream for you. But when you enter there, measure me. When you climb that level, remember me. When doors are open, you see why you must maintain connection? Can I beg you? Stop saying people have changed towards you. Be matured enough to manage transition. When season change in the life of people you once knew, understand their season has changed. Manage the change. Manage seasons change. When seasons change, reasoning changes. Connection changes. There are people that don't talk to you anymore because they don't reason like you because season has changed. Understand the change. It's not pride. Their season has changed. Be smart enough to know their season has changed and accommodate the transition. God has lifted the ministry of somebody you knew. He's now blessed. Things are happening. And you come around, you see, you come around him. You want to remind him of how both of you went to Bible school. Sir, season has changed. You want to remind him of how you used to support him. No, let him be the one to remind you of that. I'm telling you why you meet great men and you lose contact and you are praying that there are no helpers. God has brought many helpers, but you are not smart enough to understand the language of helpers. Helpers that will help you in destiny. When level changes and seasons change, be smart enough. You see a great man. Stop reminding him you went to school together. Honor his new level. Let him remind you that you went to school together. Me too. Your excellency, sir. What does that say? Uh, uh, you are doing this one. Stand up. That is how to assess great men. Not ah, uh, oh boy. Yeah, you call him his traditional name. Oh boy, we're in school now. You used to copy from me. And four bodyguards bundled you. And you get angry. People are not smart, so they lose help. A man. He raised up many sons. And somehow, he had issue, went out of ministry. One of his sons began to pay his bills. Blessing him. The son invited him to preach. And he was on the pulpit. He called the son by name. Like your general overseer, when he used to be very stubborn, the man was cringing on the pulpit. I asked the man, the son, why don't you invite him anymore? He said, ask him why. Ask him why. He has to invalidate me to endorse his superiority. 
So there are people that enter my office for the first time. I see them bring out for can I take a picture? It irritates me. First time you are meeting me, you want to take it irritates me. Why? He wants to post it. To endorse himself. Once a person does that, I just tell them, you see this person? You should not enter this office. I have met great men. Who? I have met great men. No picture. I have met great men. As I'm walking, they say, Apostle, are you going? Can we take a picture? They request. I stop. I have never. Because it is not my connection to them that endorses me. It's my work. My work. When you need to post pictures to endorse yourself, it means you are nothing. They bring our phone. So, sorry, sir. Can I take a picture? I said, we met today. You want to take a picture today? It's so bad. So we say, sir, be laying hands on me while they are taking the picture. Be laying hands. So it's like we are acting drama. I am acting. The cameraman is acting. The one kneeling down is acting. And he will lift up his hands and I'll put it on the head and they'll post it. Say when I, then he posts it. Say when I was ordained to ministry. I say, so you want me to lay hands on you? Say, yes. And you'll take a picture. I say, yes. I say, I'm not laying hands on you. Can we pray? Can you put off that camera? People are looking for human validation. It is God that endorses man. This is my beloved son! They stayed there. Hmm. They remained with Moses. I'm saying something. So there are some connections you lose eh? Let me say this to you. There are three levels of, impact, of, of, of dimensions of grace. There is delegated power. There is generated power. Generated power is the one you pray, you fast, you generate it. There is delegated. You are sent. Go and do this. And there is a backing. And there is imparted power. But one of the biggest problems you have is that you should know impartation doesn't last forever. You must maintain connectivity. Impartation. Because impartation is an overload. A man fasts, a man prays, a man does this and does that, and he imparts that anointing to you. The anointing is not on your life. It comes. But to maintain that anointing, you must go through what he went through. Once you disappear, you get the impartation and you walk away. You now have to go through what he went through to maintain that oil. But once you get the impartation and stay around, you don't go through what you went through. Because anytime you are feeling empty, you renew. It takes a, it takes a deep understanding to crap what I'm saying. Moses and Haran and Hor climbed the mountain. And the Bible says, and his hand yeah, heavy. Aaron was loyal to Moses. I said something that when the caretaker becomes more interested in the house than the owner of the house, then something is wrong. In Second Samuel, Second Samuel, I think chapter thirteen or chapter three, chapter three from verse twenty-one. 2 Samuel chapter 3 from verse 21 to 22. And you read further again from verse 26 to 27. Let me tell you the story. Abner met David and said, I will gather the people to you. I'm coming. Let me go and talk to the people and gather them. When Abner left, they told him that Joab was around. And David has given instruction. Joab erred. Joab transgressed. Nobody should touch Joab. It's my instruction. Don't kill him. Spare him. As Abner left, Abner was told that Joab came and the king welcomed him. Abner came back and said, King, you did what? You welcomed who? Abner left. Sent them to bring Joab. Killed Joab. Joab. Against the instruction. Oh, that is even mild. Absalom transgressed against David. 
in 2 Samuel 18, if you read from verse 5, the king said before all Israel, say, please, for my sake, spare Absalom. No matter his rebellion. He said, the king commanded Joab and Abishar and Ita, saying, deal gently for my sake with the young man Absalom. And all the people heard when the king gave the, the captain charge over Absalom. He gave instruction. Don't touch him. But there was somebody who was more interested in the building than the owner. Absalom wanted you dead. What did you say? We should not touch him. He said no problem. As they left, he gave an instruction to a man in verse 12. From verse 11 and 12. He says slay Absalom. This is what a man said. Verse 11 and 12 of 18. Joab said to the man that told him, Behold, when thou sawest him, what, why did thou not smite him there to the ground? I would have given thee ten shekels of silver and a ghetto. Hear what the man said. This was not one who was a lieutenant. The man said unto Joab, Though I should receive a thousand shekels of silver in my hand. You see rebellion? He said, yet I will not put forth my hand against the king's son. For in our hearing, in our hearing, the king charged thee. And Abishai and Itai saying, beware. There are people that will violate your instructions to please you. You didn't hear what I said? They will violate your instruction in the name of trying to help you. They will rebel against laid down procedures. Verse 14. Verse 14. Then said Joab, I may not tarry thus with thee. While they were talking, he said, I don't have time for you. He took three darts in his hand and thrust them through the heart of Absalom. While Absalom ran into an oak tree, he was still struggling to live. Joab ran, took that against the commandment of the king. You see, there are different kinds of rebel. I've told us before, there are prayerful rebels. Sir, these rebels can speak in tongues. They can pray, but they are rebels. There are humble rebels. They kneel down 20 times before their father. There are financially empowered rebels. They will never give to the work, but they give to members to buy loyalty. They can never give to the church. But you hear that they have opened business for somebody. Please, when such things happen around your commission, such a person should be marked. They help this, they help that, but when there is all for our sisters in church, you never see them. Those are financially empowered rebels. Looking for hearts to buy. There are prophetic rebels. They always see. There are, in this young generation, they are there. After you are finished, they always see. They gather people by, I saw something. This is what I saw. This is what I saw. These are rebels. And Moses got to a point. As his hand was lifted, the hands were tired. Sir, write this down. Anointed man, but tired hands. In ministry, you need proven men around you. I didn't say men with proofs. I say proven men. Can I tell you this one? It is good to be a gifted man, but it is better to have the gift of men. It is good to be a gifted man. But it is better to have the gift of men. <laughs> they can pray. It's not a criteria for ordination. He can fast. It's not a criteria for selection. He has been tested. It's a proof of endorsement. He can pray. Anybody can pray. The devil is the best theologian and he's still a devil. The devil is the best theologian. The devil was quoting the word to the word. Satan quoted scripture to scripture. 
Satan quoted scripture to Jesus the word. How can you tell it is written? It is written. You are telling it written. It is written. So Satan is a better theologian. The devil is the better theologian, but he is still a devil. So theology does not purify men. There are people that go to study theology to dispute Christians. Theology is a course in a secular school. There are people with master's degree in theology. They have no calling. 100% is here, okay, doesn't make you a pastor. Hey, one you just study does not mean God called you. Now, this is the problem we have. In my days in school, I was top of my class in theology. So a man automatically thinks that God has called him. Men that are proven, don't forget I said this, it is good to have assistant pastor. But it is better to be you need the right man. Ah, Paul got to a point in his life in 2 Timothy 4.16. He said, all men forsook me. The people that Paul labored for, he said, at my first answer, no man stood with me. But all men forsook me. I pray, God, that it may not be laid to their charge. All men! Jesus said, the time will come that you all will leave me alone. He said, but I'm not alone. The Father is with me. Sir, if you have one man still standing with you in your days of shaking, you have assets. Your assets are not your buildings. They are not the instruments. They are not the size of the congregation. They are not the church boss or the church campground. Your assets are the men who have survived the shaking with you, been through tests and pains. The ministry has gone through shaking. You have lost place of worship, got in place of worship. You have lost place of fellowship, got in place of fellowship. The people have come, brought down the building, brought up the building, and some people are still standing. Those are assets. Those are proven men. They may have no money. They may not be well educated. They may have no connection, no contact. They may just be simple. You may be the one trying to help them grow. But these are men that are proven and tested. Proven men. He said that which you have received, commit to faithful men. Who we in turn? Not able men. Faithful men. Proven men. Surround yourself. Second chapter 14 verse 26 what helped Jeroboam he said he said he said the Lord saw the affliction of Israel he was very bitter there was not any shut up neither was there any nor any left nor any helper without proving men ministry is bitter without proving men ministry is bitter proving men who can stand to hold your tired hand sir you are anointed your hands can be tired. You may get to the day of your spiritual low percentage. Your spiritual low voltage. Your spiritual low generated energy. You need men. And one of the things about men who hold the hands of their Moses that they must be proven. There are things they have seen. There are things they have seen. Urgents come. Reverend Kiss, they come. There are things they have seen. Both of you come fast. Come fast. You took off your shoes. No, no. It's okay. I'm talking of him. Stand on my right hand. Hold my hand. Aaron and Hall held the hand of Moses. Whenever you are close and holding the hand of a grace, you are close to his armpit. You can perceive the armpit. When you focus on what you are perceiving, the hand will go down and Israel will lose. So when God plants you around men, when God shows you the weakness of a general, it's so that you can be his strength, not his gossip. No priest, sir. I have been in ministry for 35 years. There's no priest without infirmity. The one that doesn't like money is immoral. The one that's not immoral has anger. The one that doesn't have anger is tribal minded. No priest. The one that's not tribal minded is self centered. The one that's not self-centered, that's a bad wife. No priest. There's no priest.
priest without infirmity. But when God plants men around you, it is so that you become their strength, not their gossip. When God plants graces, please help him, please help him. Let pastors to help him. When God plants graces around you, it's for you to become their strength, not their gossip. But the problem he have is that there are many people who are distracted by the armpit. So their hands are going down. Have you not asked yourself? The Bible says, whenever the hands went down, Amalek prophet. Why was the hand going down? Not that they were weak. They were in a critic, they were perceiving. My focus on the weakness of a minister of God is a loss to the kingdom of God. A generation where people who have never passed out the church will sit down and be analyzing pastors. A person who has never passed out, you don't know what it means to pastor. If he's easy, gather 20 people. Gather 20 and sustain them. Gather 50. You say, oh, they are lying to them. They are fake. He's a fake pastor. She's a fake prophetess. He's a fake prophet. Gather 50 people and be fake. And be fake for one year. Be fake for 10 years. And since it's easy to be fake, be fake for 20 years. And the same people, same people constantly. A generation where every minister who wants to get traffic must attack another minister. Every minister that wants relevance must look for a big name. Attack that name. Every blogger, influencer that wants traffic will look for one who has made name. Do you know what it means to build a ministry? The sleepless night. The 2 a.m. phone call. Who wake up, leave his wife on the bed and drive. To go and stand with a woman who is in labor who the doctor said it must be serious. He will call upon God and say, prove that you called me. He will cry. Do you know what it means when a pastor, people have gone home. On Sunday, the pastor will stay back. Two hours, he's settling husband and wife. Three hours. And you sit down and gather camera. And say your assignment is to destroy that labor. And you think God will allow that happen. All you see is one thing he said you don't like. All you see is one thing you heard he did you don't like. Do hey, you know what it is to gather to, to raise a ministry? Some of you have carried your own money and paid school fees for members. And God blesses you with a car and somebody say church money. Some of you have carried your own money. 4 a.m. You embark on a journey. But you need to travel with your youth president. To speak to that girl's family he intends to marry. To tell them, please, they should allow it happen. Now you are standing as a father. You have, you have, you have, you have gone out of your way to carry babies and name them. Carry babies and dedicated them. You've carried your money to sponsor weddings. Meanwhile, a YouTuber or a social media influencer is waiting for end of the month to be paid by, by YouTube. So he has to destroy a man's labor to build a channel. And you think God is asleep? You think God, all of them bloggers, hear me? You think God is asleep? Somebody was doing videos, I was told that she said that until Omega is empty, she will not stop. Of course, we have retired her. We have retired her. I kept quiet for months at this, until I heard that statement. I said, is that what she said? And she entered and did video against my wife. I said, that's a no-go area. We, I sent one of our pastors, go to their office in America now. This is a contact. We are not doing mail. We are doing discussion. We are not sending mail, no. 
I'm not the one. They want to bring it down. I didn't attempt to bring it down. The only time I attempted, I brought it down. I did not, I didn't attempt. It was my boys that were doing that. The only time I attempted, I brought it down. And I told my boys, I said, leave the other ones. When you hear any nonsense again, we bring it down. When people think they are mad, let them know that you are a rascal. A man of God feed the poor. You don't talk about it. Robbers get saved. You don't talk about it. Drug addicts get saved. Uh, it's only when it's negative is trending. There was one like that. One coward from Asia or something. Doing some video. I never saw it. A young boy. I never saw it. It was this year I saw it. I said, what? Lies! Analyzing lies. How can you analyze without hearing from me? You cannot be analyzing and be biased. It was, I never watched it. It was this year I saw it. I told the legal department, pursue this guy. Start here. We'll conclude where he is. You cannot have it. If this is how platforms are, are used, there will be no platform. And you see people of Nigerian descent. Are the one, they are so abusive. You do 200 videos on a man. That is talking. I was talking to the crime department in Abuja. And they told me something that shocked me. They said, do you know that when people post something and someone goes under the comment... And abuses the person and does it on two posts, three posts, four posts. He said that is cyber stalking. He said that thing is three months imprisonment. It's not bailable. He says it's not a bailable offense. Just to comment two, three times to himself. Not that you now did a video on them. By the time you now did video, post picture, two, three, four, five. He said that is jail. Because you must prove everything you said. Oh, this is propaganda. It's not truth. Do you know what it means to build a ministry? You take a statement out of a two hours message and build a content on it. Embarrassing people? I ask you a question. If a pastor stole a car, what is your business? Is it your car? Is it your car? Oh, he defrauded. We are here to expose fake people on social media. Is it your car? That is why I'm happy that everybody now, I told all our pastors, I say, oh Lord, I'm happy. You see, God is raising up people that will speak for the church. I'm telling you, those days are over. It's only negative that you call trending topic. Once it's positive, it's not a trending topic. Propaganda. To push a narrative. So no matter how positive the news the man has, don't push it. You must maintain that narrative. Child of God, we're not keeping quiet this year. We're not keeping quiet. You come for us, we will respond. We will find you. We will find you. We will find you. Nigerians don't know when to stop. Until you stop them. It is fun to them. Tearing down a marriage. Tearing down a ministry. Tearing down people. Tearing down reputation. is fun to them. I was not aware. I was never aware. But this year, I settled down 4th of January. And I was watching. I said, this person is alive. In this world, in this world, as he doesn't know what's coming for him, even though he has brought down a lot, he didn't know that the lawyer saved everything. He said he has to prove every single thing he has said. How dare you? I don't know you, you don't know me. You sit down, you, 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 know, you not take me as an exciting topic to now do videos on. I'm not that normal. Oh. And you said, you are, I heard the young man was arrogant. That the other person didn't know what to do. That's why they couldn't bring down this one. He know what to do. You don't know what to do. The people working for you are boys. We know the owners of the platform. And I tell all of you, you see, let me say this to you. Protect your work. Protect your work. 
this has nothing to do with it. they are silencing truth which truth you are destroying a marriage destroying the home destroying children what truth i repeat it if a pastor stole money from a person in church is he your church that doesn't make it right we are not endorsing it but is he your who made you a judge over ministers who made you a judge over ministers All you do is to carry people. Yeah. What I'm saying, is it true? The Redeemed Christian Church of God. The ministry is 70 years. The ministry. They see a person under 40, less than 30. He's analyzing a ministry of 70 years. Are you cursed? It's not free for all. Except you are not living in this world though. Go to Pluto, go to Mars, go to Jupiter, go to Venus. If it's this world, we'll find you. We are planning, we are working out something. We are working out something. A pastor's wife was weeping, called me on the phone. Somebody said that there was nothing the lady didn't say about the pastor's wife. And the woman was weeping. He said, Dad, this is not true. I said, You don't need to tell me. I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. And pastors will go there and comment. They will share. They will be excited. What you wish for people is what happens to you. Those you call fake. Those of you online who call people fake. They are only fake in your mind. They are fake in your mind. Those on ground know those who are real. They are fake in your mind. Am I talking to somebody here? They are fake in your mind. We saw what somebody posted last, last two weeks or so. We saw what the person posted and we told them. We said go after him. No, just a post. Went after him. Bundled him. It was a post. And it was locked up. They begged and begged and pleaded and pleaded. I said, no problem. We released him. As soon as we released him, he was getting home. A lawyer was waiting for him. The lawyer served him. One billion. He said, but I thought he has forgiven me. I said, we forgive you there. But this one is just justice. One billion. Or you go to prison. Nobody has monopoly of this madness. President Bush and George, they ask him, are you wicked? He said, no, but don't come for me. He said, I'm a very nice person, but if you come for me, I'll make you a project. This rascality is because pastors are seen as soft target. Can they try that to the other religion? I dare you, carry an imam's picture or a sheikh's picture. Post it. No, post it and do an analysis. If you're not a coward. But pastors are seen as soft targets. Because they have equal people who, are, who they call themselves members of churches that can't say, oh, how dare you? Tell it not in God. Publish it not in the street of Ashkelon. How are the mighty falling and the weapons of all was scored? Liars and deceivers. Who cannot take what they give? When they finish that video, go and make a comment. Say, I disagree with you. They will block you. And since you are, you are talking about people, why can't you take what people are saying about you? This your thing is not true. They will attack you. We are not keeping quiet again, no? I'm not just saying us. Anyone you see in the body, it doesn't have to be you. A minister, whether it's orthodox, whether reverend father, whether priest, whether catholic priest, and that person is being attacked, you go there in your numbers. And cause problem for that handler. Since you are interested in ministry, answer the call, start a church. Answer the call and start a church. Answer, start a church. 
How did I get here? Somebody sent me a text. Yes, sir. That choir member is dating that person. And I say, what happened? Yes, I said, I should tell you. I say, is it your business? This person is having a... What is your business? I just say, I should tell you. So that I now do what? Amen. The problem, the energy the church uses to fight, listen this to this. The energy the church uses to fight itself. If it can use it to fight its enemies, the church will be respected. Can I repeat that? The energy the church uses to fight itself. If it can use it to fight its enemies, the church will be respected. When you speak against any man of God, you are not my friend. It doesn't have to be me. When your energy is to portray ministers in a negative light, you are an enemy of the church. So we declare you persona non grata. You are an enemy of the church and we treat you as an enemy. It's only Christians you don't take to court. You take enemies of church to court. The Bible says, don't take, don't take thy brother. When you want my downfall, you are not my brother. You are an enemy. And some of you will go to that such a place because the pastor is in your location and is doing well. It's an opportunity for you to tear him down. When the hand went down, Amalek prevailed. Anytime a minister goes down, hell gains. Write this down. The mystic of a general is not a subject of discussion. It's a warning to younger ministers. The mistakes of a general is not a subject of discussion. It's a warning to younger ministers. If thy brother, Galatians 6 verse 1, is overtaken in the fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one with the spirit of meekness. Knowing Galatians 6 verse 1. That you also. Can be tempted. So whenever a ministry goes down. Hell. Gains. Hell. Gains. Hell. Gains. In your life. Hell will not gain. I say hell will not gain. They brought a stone for him to sit down. Sir, if only your members know that if they can let you rest, they will rest. If they can let you rest, they will rest. So long Moses was standing, the work was tedious. But as they gave him a seat to rest, now, now, when your body is well rested, your spirit performs maximally. When your body, there are some pastors that walk and walk and walk till their body stop working. When your body, I've told you, when you feel like resting, rest, don't pray. You are fasting, you get to a point you are hungry, break it. Who gave you a target? Who gave you a target? I must do seven days dry. Second day you are hungry, break it. I must do nine days dry. First day, first day, your stomachs are rumbling, break it. You are still alive. You continue sometime at that time. It 
His commandments are not grievous. His assignments are not deadly. Ulcers, pains, sicknesses because of competition. I did seven days dry. It's not becoming an emblem. An emblem. A man is dying, drowning. I must complete nine days dry. I've seen people, and some of you may have seen some who have been carrying from ground of fasting to hospital. Who gave you this target? Are you a marketer? Are you who gave you this target? I believe in fasting, but there are no see, see. Somebody asked me a question. Is how many days does it take to fast and be free from spiritual husband? I say take deliverance. It doesn't take fasting, take deliverance. Nobody should tell you that when you do this for five days, this is what you will now see. No, there are no spiritual metrics and yastic for measurement. Our work with God is personal. What somebody fasts for one week to get, somebody might get it in one day. There are no yastics. Those teachings are falsehood. There are no yastic. That you got it that dimension doesn't mean that is what is open. Those are, those are just fables, human man-made fables. There are no yastic. Our work with God is personal. William Abraham was one of the sharpest prophets I've seen. Late William Maron Abraham. One of the sharpest prophets. The longest fast he did was three days. Yes. The man was eating well. But when he wants to, he has a program, he will disappear from where people are and go to the forest. He doesn't want to study. His idea of access to God was staying away from people. He's there. He's a hunter. He was a hunter. He's hunting. He's eating. But he's away from people. That was how he connects. Somebody else, after three days, may not feel the grace of God. He go for four days. He go for 50 days. He go for 100 days. Some of you have so fasted that we are wondering what is going on. If you don't take care of your body, you will die. There is no two way. You don't take care of your body. <laughs> no, but it's the truth. From VG to VG, from all night to all night, your wife says sleep tonight. Say, no, the work must grow. Is it your village work? Let the owner do the work. We are fasting one day. We are fasting. We started on a Saturday. No, we started on a Friday. We fasted. Saturday we were fasting. Came to the pulpit on Sunday. I ministered. I screamed, screamed, screamed. We we're to end on a Tuesday. Man of God, as I was traveling on a journey, hunger. I told the convoy to stop and buy gala. They stopped and they bought gala. And those around me, none had boldness enough to say, I thought we have a, I am dying. I am dying. They bought it, I ate. I went to where I was at the lounge, I ordered for proper liquid. They gave me smoothie, I drank. I said, they not born you well. <laughs> to, tell, to tell me, I thought you are closing on Tuesday. They not born you well. <laughs> what is all these gimmicks? Some of you are hiding to break. <laughs> I, 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 I just caught you now. You are hiding to break. Who are you deceiving? Hiding to break. And you come out to round up prayer. 
As you are rounding up prayer, you are betting on the altar. They know you drank coke. Tell somebody, be real to yourself. Say, be real to yourself. One more time. Say that again. And there are, I, I, am, I, am I talking to somebody here? I'm praying. Say, so you're going to have a personal vigil. You get to a point you are getting tired. Climb your bed. What is all this now? Who taught you this kind of gospel? And some people are so unwise. You have a personal vigil. And you are awake till 11. You have a personal vigil. You are awake till 10.30. You have a personal vigil. You want to wake up at 9 to pray. And you load that swallow. Wisdom. Hallelujah. Number two, and then I'm going to pray. I said, surround yourself with proven men. Anointed man! But tired hands. Number two. This story made us see the dangers of doing ministry without a covering. The dangers of doing ministry without a covering. Joshua's confidence while he faced Amalek was that there was a Moses standing on the mountain. To face Amalek without a Moses is suicidal. To do ministry without a covering is detrimental. You are covering people. Who is covering you? You are their father. Who is your father? You have been offended by several men. Everybody has offended you. So you have lost confidence in submission. Sir, let me say this to you. Joshua chapter 1 verse 2. Joshua 1 2. Joshua 1 2. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. Go over this Jordan. Thou and all these people. Go over this Jordan. Thou and all these people. If you have not crossed Jordan, they can't cross Jordan. Thou and all these people. Your encounter is what bets their encounter. But you must be connected to a Moses. Errors. Moses did not enter literally the promised land. In fact, it didn't end well. But see how God addressed him. Joshua 1, verse 2. Moses, my servant. Ah. The Lord said, speak to the rock. He smote the rock. That was a capital offense. But yet God said, Moses, my servant. In our estimation, he missed it. Moses, my servant. One day, the Lord told me, this, this will shock you. I, 
somebody may take it out of context, but this will shock you. God told me, say, what I say and check, sit down, what I see and check in the life of my servants is my covenant over their life. Is their, my covenant over their lives. God never sees as man sees. What God sees over a man's life. This is why. <laughs> my wife, mama and I, we see everybody, we say, sir. How are you, sir? Good morning, sir. So I'm, saying, I'm not, sir, papa, I'm not, sir. I mean, I've replied some songs on the prophet. They say, sir, sorry, oh. Sorry. This is not, that is me, oh, it's me. I say, I know, sir. You see, when you respect everyone, you cannot miss who carries something. But when you choose who to respect, you may have made a wrong choice that who carries grace, you alienated him from the respect. My mother taught me, say, greet everybody with respect because you don't know who's in your you. Some old men have small bodies. So we spread it like as a net. We spread honor on ministers. We spread honor on giftings. We spread honor on talents. Have a Moses. And I must tell you, sir, for every one of you that has a father or has a covering, mentorship is not slavery. Your father and the Lord should not tell you who, not, who to talk to and not to talk to. That's slavery. He should have raised you enough that by reason of his teaching, you know who not to talk to. God has raised me to father people. I'm their mentor, not their Lord. I'm their father, not their savior. People can feel imprisoned because of submission. There are artists that can't sing on certain pulpit because certain people will not invite them again. There are certain... A young man in Abuja took pictures with me, him and the wife. The father and the Lord told him, get it down. Insecurity. People are calling me. They say, why did you... When people are calling... You see, when you are a minister... Who likes gossip? Your ministry will be toxic. When you are interested in this said, that said, this said, that said, you will have a toxic ministry. Everybody around you will be a pretender. Because everybody is reporting. Have you not seen ministries where they record themselves? They record themselves on the phone. They carry screenshots. You see, everybody there is, 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 has become a, an FBI. Looking for what to hold against another person. To tender. Say this is the evidence. He said it. That's not a place to put your head on down. When you meet a father. There should be excitement. Not blood pressure. You meet a mentor. Because the first question they will ask you. You are confused. Second question. Everything you are guilty. Someone, oh Lord. I have singers in church. There are people that they have sent message that this person invited me. The person that invited them does not speak well of me. I tell them, go there. Bless the people. Bless them. Bless the people. A young man left our ministry. One of my friends invited him. And I saw them. He called me. He said, I'm not going. They said he rebelled. I said, that's why you should go. To let him know that rebellion doesn't pay. It's about God's people, not about him. People are gathered there to be blessed. So because he rebelled against me, you won't bless the people? Bless the people. And he said, who are you? I said, I'm a child of God. I'm a Christian. There are people you don't talk to. There are people you are avoiding. There are people, no. There are people, there are people. There are, there are, there are some of you people see you and they start telling you, please care. Of the association, you know what they are saying. They are throwing throw shades indirectly because, because do you know Romans 8, as many as are led by the Spirit, is no more a content in the church. 
It's no more a content. It's now as many as are led by what they hear. I want to ask you a question, man of God. Take your seat. That pastor you don't like, was it on the basis of what God told you or what you read or heard? No, answer the question. Was it on the basis of what God told you or what you read or heard? I love Pastor Chris. You know what he said? He said, I don't connect to men by what I read or see. I connect to them by what God's word says about them. Media lies. Be careful. Any submission that puts your life in, in a box, re-examine it. Re-examine it. Re-examine it. Re-examine it. Be called is not enough. You must be covered. Be called. Who is standing with you determines how long you stand. Joshua should not take glory at the foot of the mountain because there is a Moses standing. There's a Moses standing. When Joshua sees his prowess over the, the nation of Amalek, it's because the hand. And when God connects you to men, hold their hands. When God connects you to giftings, hold their hands. And the generation today, when I see some of you are singers, eh? especially those of you who are artists and some worship leaders who are busy following online secular artists, Secular artist, we post something. And you, gospel artist, you repost it. You say, hmm, inspiration. You say, inspiration. You'll be shocked. I'm trying not to call names. There are secular artists that are encountering Christ and releasing gospel songs. The fold and the field where you have been privileged to stay on. You are following them in that fold, that field. Now they have entered your field to embarrass you. To say you are following me. Even when I didn't have light. Now I have seen light. How do you feel? There is an artist, a singer called Justin Bieber. Was it second? He has released a gospel song. What about all those that he sang and led to that other kingdom? Those that followed his previous songs. When you go high, you lose your senses. Now he has entered. He's not, he sang a gospel song. So how do you feel? A popular gospel artist cannot follow another gospel artist on social media. They will follow a, social, a, 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 a secular artist. And comment on their post. I don't know if I'm making sense. How would you feel when that person you are following a, a person in darkness now leaves darkness and enter light? You have to be smart. The, the non essentials that divide us. It's not as strong as the essentials that unite us. Is somebody getting something? Is somebody? Joshua! Don't take credit. Some of you are in locations where things are getting easy for you. Because missionaries came there years ago and labored. Have you seen some people who tell you, I'm not praying, things are working for me. All this prayer, prayer. I'm not praying, but things are working for me. And they have, they have been honest about it. No, they have been honest. They don't go to church like you. But things are working. They don't fast like you. But things are working. Check their trajectory. Check. There, there was a grandmother. Who spent her years in the church. Who will hold her breast and speak concerning her children and grandchildren. 
the young man is a product of a praying grandmother and is arrogant to say I am not praying the young man is a, is a product of a, an intercessory grandfather who sold himself to missions in his old age I was in the country recently I saw some white people we were in the same hotel so I asked somebody who came to pick me I said these guys have been around when I come out I see them why are they here? He said they came to give some supplies to some of their colleagues from their country who are in the interior villages who have sold their entire lives to preaching the gospel in places where there are no lights. Wake up with mosquitoes. So they give them medical equipment, medical supplies. They have sold, living in America, living in Europe, coming to the hinder parts of Africa to give them. And you think when God sees that, that kind of sacrifice, their seed, their grand seed, their great grand seed, there's a covering. Please, don't, no matter how arrogant you are, don't, don't offend a missionary. Offending a missionary is like, is like victimizing an orphan. There's a covenant on certain people that speaks from one generation because if there are demonic patterns, there are godly patterns. Who is covering you? Who is covering you? Who is the ego that has spread this nest? I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. The God that gave Joshua victory over Amalek. May that God give you victory over the battles of life. May that God give you victory over the battles of life. May that God give you victory over the battles of life. May that God give you victory over the battles of life. Dr. Chidi, you know what I saw in the Bible? God told me. He said, honor thy father and thy mother so that thy days he said, honor thy father. He didn't say, honor thy good father. He didn't say, honor thy kind father. He didn't say, honor thy loving. So it doesn't matter how you see your father. The Lord told me, Do you know there are people today who have never understood what submission is in ministry? They verbally say they have fathers. They verbally say they have a father. But the, 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 the principles of submission, they have no idea. No idea. It's verbal. It's Baba. Moses stopped. Joshua continued. But on the Mount of Transfiguration, it was not Joshua that appeared. It was Moses, a father. Elijah stopped. Elisha continued. But on the Mount of Transfiguration, it was not Elisha that appeared. It was Elijah, a father. I'm speaking. So when you are under an anointing that you claim to submit to and yet you are seeing crisis, check your submission level. Check it. Check it. And there are people that God is calling to you. There are men of influence. Men of order. Men who God is specifically calling to you that will hold your hands, men that will stand with you, 
men that will support you men that will stand with you as you make up your mind to grow in the depth how many of you know that great things are only found in the deep you don't find diamond on the surface you find fine stones diamond the deep so peter launch out into the deep on the surface what you find is tadpoles and tilapia scrubs or shark well in the deep great things are found in the deep go deep go deep go deep go deep go deep do you know if you study the story of her you won't see any other major assignment her did in his life the only major assignment was just to come hold that man's hand that is why he was wired Can I say this? There are people whose calling is to follow other people who are called. So that's their calling. Somebody asked for a Robert's wife. He said, Pastor's wives are doing this, doing that. What is your own calling? He said, My calling is oral. My calling is my husband. Mama wrote a book, Pastoring the Pastor. There are people as you follow, as they climb, you climb. Don't struggle for their rod. Look for their God. As they climb, you climb. There are nations my shoes have entered. There are places my shoes have entered. When I look at these shoes, I'll tell them you have traveled though. They never went to the embassy. But they have entered nations. Am I talking to somebody here? There are some people God has connected you to. There are people that God has given you grace to cover. If they understand. Some of you need to do a workers meeting and just sit people down and play this message. Let them know what it means to follow. There are members that are only called to a specific church. God is everywhere but he meets people somewhere. Hold the hand. There are some of you looking at me now. You are anointed. But you are tired. You have been backstabbed. Betrayed. Hurt. Humiliated. You are tired. You are tired. Do you know what it means for someone that called you father? To be the same person who writes and posts all kinds of things against you. You are tired. For someone you raised, you invested in, you brought up. And the funny thing about these people is that you don't know that you are not doing the called man. No. I am an example. I'm an example. Whether in politics, whether in ministry, in entrepreneur, in business, never bite a finger that fed you. It doesn't matter in what phase of life. Never. Some of us now in ministry, it takes the Holy Ghost and your love for God for you to continue. When you look at what people have done to you. You see there are many of us who are trying to cover up. But your heart is heavy. Dr. Okorafo. A pastor was taken to court. The case was going on. Every day the wife would ask him. Hey my love. My love, my love what are we going to do? This is what they are saying. He would tell the wife. As they get to court. The people have something to counter. Everything he mentioned to his wife was surprised. They were knowing about it. He said, the wife said, who told them? He said, but you are the only one I told. Say, God forbid, I can't do that to you. So they were prepared. Finally got to court. And they said, you have one final witness, my Lord. 
when the man turned, the wife came out. Stood in the dock against the husband. My love. You see, offense is a terrible thing. No minister of God or the wife should carry. You see, then the priest in scriptures, one of the criteria is the priest must not have boils. A priest must not have sores. Once a priest must be without blemish. Once they see a scar on the priest, is disqualified. A minister must not have sores, hurts, grouse, pain that you are carrying. Anointed man, but tired hands. I want to pray. And I want everybody to cry to God today. Send me Aaron and Hall. Send me selfless men. Father, send me Aaron. Send me Hall. I am tired of investing in rebels. I'm tired of fasting and praying. Calling upon the Lord. Opening my heart to rebels. Send me here on. Sir, ministry is peaceful when the right people are around you. Ministry can be like heaven. You come to church smiling. You live smiling. You come to church happy. You live happy. Because the right people are around you. Father, give me Aaron. And her. Send me Aaron. And her. Send me Aaron. And her. Kapatarata shata. Ziperita patash. Zetetete. Send me Aaron. Send me her. Send me Aaron. Send me her. Send me Aaron. Send me her. Open that mouth. Send the right people. <laughs>
In the name of Jesus. Thank God for gifted men. But thank God more for the gift of man. The greatest, the greatest assets God has aside the blood is men. Even God is helpless without a man. God. I sought for a man. And Jesus saw him and knew he has been there for a long time and asked him, Will thou be made whole? And he said, I have no man. John chapter 5 and verse 7. So he was in that condition for long because of the bankruptcy. Everybody under the gallery, not those here, everybody under the gallery, hold your hand. I saw a casket. I just saw a casket in the flash. The yoke of death is crushed under the gallery. Under the gallery. Lift your hands. Hold hands and lift it up. Under the gallery. Under. Under. I just saw a casket in the flash. Father, I reestablish the covenant of life upon everyone there under that gallery. In the name of Jesus, I ask for an impartation for longevity an impartation for longevity an impartation for longevity fresh fire fresh fire fresh fire fresh fire for longevity for longevity fire there's someone
There's someone, your name is Afolabi. You have cancer. There's a certain Afolabi. You have cancer. There's a certain Afolabi. Listen, listen to me. Listen to me. There's a certain Afolabi. And there is an attack of cancer. There's a confirmed medical attack. That the enemy said, if you are not the one, please don't come. If you are not the one, don't come. And there is an attack of cancer confirmed by the doctor. Is that you? Come. Confirmed by the doctor? Sir? By the doctor? Stand up. And there is a problem with your stomach. Sir, your time has come. Amen. By the mercy of God. You have not been fortunate, too fortunate in the battles of marriage. Are you following me? Yes, sir. Who is busy? My wife. Where is she? She's in Lagos. Lagos? Yeah. Come. But you are not in Lagos. You don't live in Lagos, you live abroad. Yeah. Where do you live? Belgium. Belgium. Yeah. So why is she in Lagos and you're in Belgium? Because when I problem then in 2012, then I traveled to What is that? Your daughter. This is your dad? Come. <laughs> By the mercies of God, be made whole. By the mercies of God. Be made permanently. Totally. Oh! We're praying for the sick tomorrow. There's healing power here. We're going to see healings tomorrow morning. But the Lord is just leading me to do this. Are you born again, lady? Uh -uh. Are you born again? Be honest with me. Step to the side. Come. Are you crying? Lift your hands. Are you a copper? Are you a youth copper? Yes, sir. Look at me. The counsel of God for you. Look at me. There are mistakes you made. And the mercy of God has overruled them. Let me explain to you. I saw you in school. This is Benin Republic. And there were mystics. And the Lord God Almighty preserved you and called you forth to help you. Please serve God. Margaret. Yes, sir. What's your name? That's your name? Yes, sir. Serve God. Serve God. Serve God. While we are in the office, God told me something. He said there is somebody in this meeting who has been married and <laughs> your name is Chooks. You and your wife plan not to, have, not to have children. Your name is Chooks. You say because of the way things are. No, 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 no. We don't, we don't. Your last name is High Saint. You pastor in Agbo. Is it is that the person? Come and tell me why. People are praying for the fruit of the womb. You don't want fruit of the womb. Come and tell me why. Please, if your name is Kunle, come here. You are an apostle. I 
Are you Apostle Kule? Yes, I have been praying. In my Come. Heart. You have been praying what? In my heart that God should put my, my name in your heart. And I've been looking at. Come. Above. Your eyes are almost plucking out of your socket, looking at me. Yes, sir. So that's all you want. Yes. Come, sir. come. Are you the one? What's your name? High Saint. Huh? Choose High Saint. Where do you pastor? Yes, sir. Where do you pastor? I pastor in Nabo, sir. Come. What did you and your wife discuss? Stand up. What did you and your wife discuss? Huh? I made that thing, sir. So that we're not going to have children for now. Because of the waiting, sir, you don't want children for now? Yes, sir. All right, come. You see, people do not understand there's a blessing children bring. Where's your wife? She's not born now. You will have children. This year, she will take in. You are waiting for things to get better for children to come. And the Lord is waiting for children to come for things to get better. I have come before your throne. I see your face. My life has changed. I have come before your throne. I see your face. My life has changed. I have come before your throne. I see your face. My life has changed. Oh. Someone. As a pastor, I've been duped twice. You're trying to relocate and travel abroad. An agent took your money before. Another took your money again. You are planning. You stopped for a while. But now you are planning again. To still travel. You have been defrauded twice. But you are planning again. But you are in a state of confusion now. Not knowing what step to take. Because you are so eager to travel. Come. Let's ask the Lord. Let's ask the Lord. Your desire is to go abroad, to travel. They've defrauded you once, defrauded you twice, and you're still planning. When I say defraud, I mean you gave money to agents, they didn't give you the visa, you gave a second one. And you are still planning because you just have this conviction about doing international ministry. Please, wherever you are, come. I don't have time to waste. If I call your case, you don't come out, I'll move on to the next person. I'm going to count to three. Where are you? One, two. Raise your hand, sir. Twice, they've taken your money, and you still want to travel. Huh? You, st you still want to travel? It's all right. We'll pray. <laughs> Let's pray. I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will give you the gift of man. What this meeting is producing for you is the almighty God giving you the gift of man. Are there people that are not called to you? May your path not cross. Are there people called to you? May you not miss them. Receive the gift of man. Jesus. 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 Yeah, yeah, what the Lord says. The Lord said, I should tell you by divine empowerment. He said, I should tell you. Relevant men with treasures are coming your way 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 receive it in the name of Jesus Eh? 
every help needed to make ministry easy every help needed to give you speed and advancement take it right now you are not called to fail you are not called to repeat circles you are not called to maintain evil satanic patterns i decree upon you by the god of heaven who called you receive angelic assistance receive angelic assistance receive angelic assistance receive angelic assistance receive, angelic assistance. receive supernatural support supernatural supply sir do you know that singular act god told moses in verse 14 of that chapter he said write this down this act of connectivity and the lord said to moses write this for a memorial in the book and rehearse it in the year of joshua that i will utterly put out the remembrance so any time Amalek came against Israel, that action that happened on the hill was a memorial. Write it in the book. That just for a man's hand to be lifted, the enemies will be slain with ease. Everyone ordained to lift your hand, may you encounter them. Everyone ordained to lift your hands, may you encounter them. Everyone ordained to lift your hands, may you encounter them. Everyone ordained to lift your hand, may you encounter them. A preacher visited us some weeks ago, came to church, was in the crowd. After the service, he said, went to see me and held um, blueprints of a house and a church. And he said to me, he wants me to pray if the Lord approves the building. I said, but you've already drawn it and you say you've gotten government approval. You should be praying for supply. He says, our supply is not a problem. There's a man who said, I should ask the apostle if the Lord approves it. He will build a house, he will build a church. I shouldn't bring anything. You the church, furnish it, anything we think we need, you put them inside. So I just want to know, is the Lord saying we should go ahead? So the problem now is not the supply. The Ministry can be sweet when there are people holding your hands. Yes, sir. So sweet. I went to preach some years ago somewhere, and while I was preaching, I called forth for a seat. One of the young men that went with me felt embarrassed and came and whispered in my ear, said, you foretell me. I said, what? He said, he said don't, don't, tell him to go and sit down. I said, what? I said, tell him to go and sit down. I said, what? He said, I'm here now. So, hold on. The people went there to sit down. He went to his boot and uprooted 16 million. Boot, boot. We asked for 4 million, 4. He brought 16. And dropped on the water. And I said, he said, no, announce him, no, announce him, no, announce him, no, announce him. Dropped it. We are not just talking of materialism now. That, this was years ago. So for me to be talking, the church I was preaching needed to pay off their bills of their building. We are dedicated as a pastor. Is there anything you are owing? He said, just four million. I said, we'll raise it here. I need certain people as they were coming out and struggling their feet. He came, whisper, you foretell me. I said, what? Make they go sit down. Make they go sit down. You were with me now, Dr. K. went to the booth I saw bags coming to the altar I said they want four he said no now four times they feed the old other things they feed the old other things I, I whispered I said they are owing four million he said they will feed all other things some other things when they never tell you me there I was guest speaker oh. I came with a son who embarrassed them there 
when we are going in the car, I say, do you know you are not okay? I'm sitting, you meet this car, we are in this kind of money here. He said, now so with the car, with the car and our car, we don't know what God will talk. So why somebody is looking for help or somebody is looking for who to help? It's not tight an offering that brings glorious ministries. No, no. I can't remember when last I knew what our tithe was in this church. I can't remember what year. I can't remember what year. I say, okay. Hey, come. What is Aaron and Hall? Doctor, a pastor was having a grass church. In less than two months, they saw a glass, glass church standing in America. And they asked him, how come? He said, John Rockefeller passed by. He was passing. So he said, no, 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 no. Bring any design you want. There are helpers in this work. We are not propagating materialism. We are only initiating by God's grace what makes ministry easy. Everyone who has come to this place, my father, and who has humbled themselves before you here, everything they need to make ministry easy, grant it to them. they need to make this assignment easy make their gifting easy make their talent easy make their calling easy grant it to them whatever is holding those people we only thought that there was an error we didn't know there was a hall I bring them under pressure Everyone ordained to hold your hand. I bring them under pressure to help you. In the name of Jesus. 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 Just pray in the Holy Ghost, somebody. Separatatash. Tete peroto koparate tike petosa. Separate tete perete tete tete. Separate tete tete perete. I can hear you roa roa in tongues, roa in the spirit. <laughs> Yes, <laughs>
if you were here this morning and you are, you've done your transfer or you have yours here, please can you just come to the altar quickly? Papa's account is there. Please, if you did transfer, just touch the altar. If you have yours, lay it and just stretch those hands. Whatever category you stood for before God, it was recorded. Just lay it on the altar, look for space. Father, we thank you. I extend this short word from God's servant, our Father, that by this connect, may the grace that found him and works for him, may that same grace speak for every one of us. You have connected to a virtue, you have connected to a grace, you have connected to an anointing. It will be obvious that you met with grace this season. In the name of Jesus. Go and excel as declared. In Jesus precious name. Please tomorrow morning service is going to be. The beginning of the impartation service. Don't miss it. Be here on time. Prepare yourself. And it's going to be a great season and a great time. Everyone rise. Lift up your seed faith to heaven. Your thanksgiving offering as we put it. This section to a close. Lift it up to heaven. Lift up your thanksgiving seat to heaven. Lift it up to heaven. Father, again and again, we thank you for the privilege to sit and be fed. Lord, we ask that this grace will speak volume for every one of us. As this seat connect to this grace, may the unction to dance and to celebrate be our portion. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Quiet. What's wrong on the road? I'm not making it. On a motor road, making it. Any merit to follow me? On a motor road, making it. What's wrong on the road? I'm not making it. On a motor road, making it. Any merit to follow me? On a motor road, making it. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not making it. On a motor road, making it. You are the mighty God, the living God. There is no like you. So come, my dear. You are the mighty God, the living God. There is no like you. So come, my dear. You are the mighty God, the living God. There is no like you. So come, my dear. You are the mighty God. Thank you. You are blessed. We are blessed. You are blessed, blessed in the name of Jesus. Go in the power of this encounter and let there be a continuation of visitation. And we are coming back again with an obviousness of God's impartation in the name that is above every other name. My head is a good head. My life is a good one. Angels will fight for me. I will wear my crown. And I'll testify to his praise and glory. In Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Are you blessed?
Yes, it's a good thing to go 